guys welcome back to the channel and uh, what's that up to today well it's the day after Christmas so Merry Christmas everybody and um, I'm out in the garage been out here for about two hours and got the heat going so uh, I could actually maybe do something so uh, I'll give you a rundown on what we were doing and then maybe we'll do something how's that sound like a plan right so first thing I want to do is show you what I got the temperature up to so you can see there Maybe it's almost 50 degrees. That's pretty good. And to do that, I've been working on my wood stove. So here's the old wood stove. It's fire, warm, warm fire. So anyway, um, that's working, but I know it's hard to tell because the jet engines are running, but there's a fan behind this stove. Actually, I can, probably shut that one off anyway you guys can hear that fan running back there I'm not crawling back there because it's well it's hot so um but the fan was an old bouncy house fan um had a small squirrel cage kind of like this but small um you know maybe uh I don't know 10 inches in diameter and uh plastic I think if I remember correctly had a metal center in it so it the motor on that pooped out and i picked this up from a buddy of mine and uh it's nice see it works good it spins good but it takes a lot of power to get her going and the pulley on it is about a 10 inch pulley and they do make like a 14 inch pulley so i could probably put that on there and make it work but I didn't want to do that um, so I took the old motor and the old motor had these cool little tabs and then it set down inside this metal frame and then there was a couple 10 millimeter bolts on each one of these tabs see they're about 120 degrees apart so I drilled those out and popped them off and I MIG welded them to the side of a plain old half horse motor that I had floating around in the in the hoard and stuck it all together and as you can hear it's been running for about three hours sounds good i don't know if you can hear it but it sounds good and it's not as loud as the old one which is nice so um if i'm not running this i usually run this for just a little bit you know maybe an hour or two when it's real cold and then just let the stove keep up with it you know, I do have insulation in the roof, but it's starting to sag, and you can see a gap over there, and there's gaps over there, and yeah, yeah, I lose, I lose some heat up through there. But like I said, it's about 50 out here right now. Um, so, what else have I been doing? So I worked on my fan. Uh, I worked on. Oh, I got uh, some rubber for the. Um, back window or windshields or whatever for the fork truck and maybe for the Mac this is just that locking strip one inch stuff I got it for a Jeep it was cheaper to buy this whole thing and there's I don't know maybe 10 12 foot in there and uh, I think I paid like three bucks a foot if I figured it out which was pretty cheap that was about the cheapest I could find it but it looked like the exact same stuff uh, let's see what's going on here on the Big Mac. And yeah, not a lot here on the floor. She's still floorless. But I've been working up in the upper cab a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see, but I put some fiberglass in there. And uh, it's, uh, my camera's doing weird stuff. Stop doing it if you're going to blink. So anyway, um, yeah, so I put fiberglass in there. I put fiberglass over there on the inside. And um, so now I got a substrate to kind of build this, you know, radius art deco look, I guess we'll call it. Um, so then I did the back of the cab. i lose my helmet here, I know I am. Anyway, the back of the cab, what we did was we made a piece of metal here. You guys can see so there's a piece of metal it's folded over so it's got a hem on the bottom and then what it does is it comes over here to the sides kind of morphs into what was still here this was all rotted out 
and then I just laid this on top and just welded down through. I didn't get real crazy about trying to butt weld it or anything like that. And then tiger hair, well, that's actually short haired, uh, fiberglassed over the top of that. And then what we'll do is we'll lay, lay some putty on top of that. I knock some dents out down there. Um, the whole point of it is just to get it so it doesn't look totally rotted out. And we'll get it sanded down and puttied up. Got to do the same thing over here. I knocked a lot of the dent out of here, but there's still quite a bit of dent in there. So um, that's kind of the plan. Haven't really done much more with the engine transmission mess. I did find a possible whole nother truck. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just what we need another freaking truck. But um, it was cheap and it's got a lot better cab part than up here. You guys can see that's that's pretty crusty. And I'm having a hard time fixing that, trying to make a fold to roll in there. It's fighting me. So I might be able to cut the cab. I mean, everybody, oh, you could use the whole cab. Well, it's got its own issues. It's actually worse in other places, like the rockers and stuff are worse. So I'm really thinking I may just cut it. And it's got really good dome lights. The babies are super expensive. Um, Actually, the lights, if you were to buy them through Watts that are on that truck, would cost about what I'm paying for the truck. So, so that's a no-brainer, if I can get the truck. I went and looked at the truck. I'll show some pictures. Um, I may even shot some video. If I did, I think I did. I'll, I'll throw it in here. Well, guys, guess what? We're looking at another one. Ah, uh, Let's see. Okay, the inner fenders are missing. Supposedly it's got a diesel. Yeah, there's the injection pump on it. Um, supposedly there's a tag. Can't quite see it. And might even be a, a number right in here. Something stamped. I can't make out what it is. Let's come back and take a picture of that. Side dogs. Got the Mac. Thermodyne. Cab looks worse than mine. The glasses. Well, that glass is okay. It's not. It's got bubbled in it, but it's there. I doubt she'll turn over. It's got a Mac mirror on it. That's pretty good. Cab lights look really, really pretty good. Horn, got an air horn. Missing a thing. But we got one of those. Getting the door open could be a challenge. It's got the, the bench seat in it, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna get this door open. So they got a front axle shoved underneath the back of it with a block of wood. Well, that's pretty high tech. I would say it's almost as short as a normal, my normal truck. Fuel tank ain't totally on the ground. It actually looks kind of better than the one I got. Hard to tell, but it don't look, look too bad in there. What else we got? She got plenty of nests in it. I think the side window's gone. Bent window is there. Both of them busted, but they're there. I don't know if you could get a pattern out of them. Might be able to. Oh, man. I don't know. So you guys can see what it is and 
what I'm looking at. But um, the guy who owns it just stopped in out of a whim. He lives local, but the truck's not local. It's about a half hour away. And he said that uh, he'd, he'd sell it to me and, and uh, he was going to bring it up to his house, which is only five, ten minutes away, which is awesome. And then from there, we'll go about getting, uh, getting it down here and or getting it over to my buddy's junkyard probably and uh, <laughs> going from there. So, uh, but no, I haven't done anything else to the Detroit. It still, still sits there. Um, at least it can move around if I roll the truck around. Transmission wise, I think I said, um, the, the other truck's got a triplex, which would be kind of fun. Goes back to two sticks. Um, but it's, uh, I guess the triplex is, I don't know. They said they had to have them revved real high. Well, a Detroit loves the rev real high. So, and then they were talking about two sticks with a Detroit. They're hard because, you know, you got to keep the RPMs up. So, ooh, dropped a hammer. I don't know. Everybody's got opinion. You know how that goes. So, um, yeah, so that's about what we did on that. Oh, I'll show you some other stuff, too. I'm not going outside because, I'm. well, I got it warmed up in here. I picked up that trailer frame. If you recall on one of the videos way back when I pulled the engine out of this turd, I bent the living bagoogers out of my um, uh, meat wagon trailer thing with the I beam and that and the winch and you know what I mean. But anyway, so I bought that thing, Facebook Marketplace, for 60 bucks and it had an axle. Right there's the axle. It's kind of ugly. It's I think you guys can see it. Maybe not. I don't know. Can't see out my dirty window. Let's try it over here. Yeah, there it is. Now I can see it. So there it is. Um, I don't know. It's out of a car or something. It's got four bolt, like a little Mustang or Pinto or something. They had dual wheels on it. It was pretty funny. Uh, anyway, uh, so anyway, I, I this is a good frame. I mean, that's like four inch channel iron and um, 60 bucks. I'm like, I'd have 60 bucks in rod trying to weld the damn thing up. Now you look behind it, sitting on the fenders of the forklift, because I really didn't have a good place to put anything, is a pile of lumber, and that's going to be the deck for it. And I got that lumber for free, basically. Well, I may have, you know, injected my body with something that will give me a third arm, according to some people out there. But, um, yeah, so with the COVID thing going around, New York State, Oneida County has come up with this plan to um, give you 100 bucks if you get a booster. Well, I work in healthcare, as most of you guys know, and uh, it kind of goes with the location that you got to get a shot anyway. So I've been triple vaccinated. Uh, uh, by the way, if anybody's watching, they want to know I have not grown a third arm. Um, I did have a sore arm, though. That that's, that's kind of sucks for a day or two. Um, but anyway, um, it's uh, there it is, and for a hundred, uh, they give me a hundred bucks. So I bought that lumber. And I bought a new set of drills. Oh, I might as well go show you my Christmas presents, too. Yeah, why not? You guys really care. <laughs> so, anyway, I bought... Um, a new set of drill bits. These are... Put them out here where you guys can see them. Bosch 10 times M42 Cobalts. 14 set, I think. For 30-some bucks. They actually rank very well. So if you guys are looking for drill bits, I love the cobalt. They work great. Um, then for Christmas, I got this set. Can't open it, but. So my wife, I told her what I wanted, and she um, got this along with what I wanted. So that's a nice little set. Drill bits, you can never have enough. I go through them like they're candy. So, what did Ed get for Christmas? Oh, well, let's see here. Ed got a new half-inch brushless HP, the new one. This is the new one. Just came out and got new the new batteries with it. The 4 amp hour uh, high performance batteries with the little, if you guys know, Ryobi's. I've had Ryobi's for years. I like Ryobi. I know. Everybody's like, oh, they're cheap pieces of crap. Well, if you look, 
See those two tabs on the back right there? Those are the indicator of the new high performance batteries. Um, if you look at my old batteries, if I can get one off, there it is, does not have that tab. Um, it does have the indicators and everything, and they look pretty much the same, but um, they are different. So they'll work, they'll plug right in. And, and, but supposedly, I watched some tests on YouTube, and they said that uh, the HP battery does a little better. This battery does about as well as their 3 amp hour batteries uh, that they were testing with, and they really liked those. And they were a little slimmer. Um, but these are the 4 amp hour. Uh, I like the 4 amp hour. I had some of those smaller ones years ago. And I think I finally junked them or threw them in a bucket or somewhere. But they did give up. And uh, they were good. They were way better than the NICAD crap. That was awful. So, But anyway, these tested out really pretty good. Um, it's... Uh, they're actually made by the same company, I think, that made... I, did, I was looking at a test, and they said the Rigid did real well. And um, the, the Milwaukee's were in there. This was, like, um, I think about on par with, like, a Makita. But for one... I think these are $199. So for $200. Bucks, and then the batteries aren't cheap. You know, another $100 bucks probably in batteries. And then uh, I didn't need a charger. I got tons of chargers from the old, the old batteries all use the same charger, so that's no big deal. So I got that, and um, I don't know why, but they, because they said to buy it, and you know how women are, they they buy whatever. Uh, they gave, or she bought me a um, another set of impacts. So I've got quite the pile of impact sockets, and um, yeah. So that was Christmas. Um, what else? Let's see, what else did I do? Anything else? Nah, not really. So I think I've babbled on long enough. I'm going to work on something. I'm going to show you those videos. Hopefully I'll remember to put them in there when I edit. Uh, this is a reminder to tell myself to do it when I'm reviewing that video. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm getting old. Anyway, guys, I'll bring you back when maybe we do something.
like I said, I promised to bring you back when we had some work done. So, got a little bit done. Uh, still got some low spots, but this is smashed up pretty bad. The back of a cab of a truck is, <laughs> you know, they take quite a beating. So, uh, it's not got to be perfect. I'm not overly uh, worried about the, the back of the cab. Um, I went around and actually... I did up there too in the uh, the Art Deco triple stack and went around onto this side, brought it over. You can see here some of the fiberglass short hair coming through, but that's okay. And uh, still needs to be sanded into this body line. But I kind of roughed it in. Got it. So the body line's there. Then I went over here to this big old mess. This was all caved in. There were three big, big grooves grooved across here. I knocked a lot of them out, but I couldn't get them all out. Um, so put some putty up there. That was a little rougher than that side. So. I had to really kind of lay it on that one and uh, thick thick and heavy kind of used my finger to smear it around a little bit but uh, I think uh, we got a good start on that probably had another good coat there definitely there's some low spots you guys can obviously see you know there's a dent there there was a dent there and there's a dent up there so so that'll do that, and then I think it's low over here too. So that's why when I was sanding, it wasn't catching that and flattening it out off. So with the DA, the DA roughs it out pretty good. As long as you keep it moving, don't stand in one spot with it. So uh, I know I'll probably put the flat board on it just to kind of see how bad it is. But like I said, I'm not going crazy with it. This thing's got Bondo. Everywhere you grind on a thing, there's <laughs> you grind off some paint and you hit Bondo. So she got a lot. And uh, at some point, we got to figure this mess out. Try to put some floorboards in it. Put the seat so it stays there. That other truck had a really neat. Um, I'll see if it's in the picture, but it has like a three-quarter bench. Has a big, a big seat on this side. Just, you know, not air rider. That's not really air. Well, it's hydraulic -y, kind of with a shock absorber in it. That's a Bostrom seat I picked up. Free. Free is good, right? And, um, but yeah, so that's where we're at with that. So, again, guys, thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting. And uh, it is, uh, again, that's clock off, so it's about 3.15. And, uh... Hope everybody had a good Christmas, and if I don't talk to you, have a happy new year, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.